This is TK Coleman, and you're listening to Small Business Edge by Ceteris. This is the podcast where we deconstruct small business entrepreneurship through conversations with franchisees, passion-based business owners, and other experts, we learn what it takes to succeed. Today's guest is Nick Olson. Nick is the founder and CEO of Sandwich Math. Uh, Nick has a very interesting story. He opened the first Jimmy John's location in New Jersey several years ago before realizing Jimmy John's had no great solution for accounting and bookkeeping and financial reporting. So Nick solved that problem by starting his own company, Sandwich Math, to fill the gap. And his company was later acquired by Ceteris in late 2017. Nick now works with Ceteris to bring a tailored software and accountant solution to the Jimmy John's franchises. Nick, thanks for joining me today, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So talk with me about uh, you working uh, with your own Jimmy John's and when you began to realize that you had an opportunity to do something special beyond owning a franchise. Sure. Well, I mean, when I opened up, I was the first one in New Jersey uh, and for many years, the only one. And so for me, it was a lot of uh, troubleshooting, finding out um, solutions to interesting problems. And a lot of that came from connecting with other owners around the country. Um, so through Facebook and other means, just building a nice network of connections. Uh, over time, that turned into looking at some problems that we were having and see if we could find collective solutions. One of them for me in particular was finding a good bookkeeping and accounting solution. When I couldn't find that, I started talking around, realized I wasn't the only one having that problem, and went about a, a year and a half long process trying to build one. So you, usually when people start off with a new franchise, there's some kind of school they have to go through or some kind of training they have to go through. I'm sure you were, you were exposed to something in the arena of finance and accounting. So what was it in, in your experience that, that, that seemed to be missing that wasn't covered by that? Yeah, and, and we certainly we go through a lot of training with Jimmy John's. Um, we spend some time in Illinois at, at uh, like a corporate training facility, and, and that training is fantastic for running and managing a store. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the missing pieces, though, are uh, you know how to look at your financials, how to know what they mean, how to use what's in the financials to actually optimize your operations. Um, and to do that, even, you need to have financials that are in a good enough format for an owner to understand. Mm -hmm. um, so those are things that we saw were missing, and and uh, felt that we could do better. You know, I'm, I'm always intrigued when I listen to stories like yours, how the difference between the innovators and the non-innovators or the, the frustrated people is uh, mm -hmm. the decision to not respond to these kinds of, kinds of problems with resentment. You could, you could have looked at your situation and said, hey, I don't feel supported enough, right? But what you said was, all right, they've given me some support, but I need something more. I'm going to figure this out. And then once I figure it out, I'm going to help people out who have a similar need. Like that's how opportunity is created. You could have just easily said, um, this is upsetting. I haven't gotten what I need. I'm going to get out of this business or I'm going to complain about Jimmy John's. What was it that made that an easy kind of like mental move for you to make? Well, and it's interesting too. You talk, we always talk about franchisees having you know, having to wear so many different hats and being able to do so many different things. And it's the same with, honestly, you know, a franchisor. They have so many things they're dealing with. I and mean, it makes sense that some of them, they just can't put all their energy into. So that for me was a place where I realized we had to step in and, and help fill a little gap. All right. So you found your own solution, but did you have a background in finance and accounting? No, I'm not an accountant. <laughs> Um, when I built the, the firm, we initially we had to go looking for an accountant to, to help us out with this. We knew what we wanted the financials to show. We knew what we wanted the system to be like. Um, we wanted to kind of mirror what Jimmy John's was all about. We wanted it to be fast. We wanted um, there to be transparency. We wanted uh, the checks and balances there. Uh, but now I had to go out and, and find an accounting firm to take care of that stuff for me. So I worked with them to build the system that I thought was best for a franchisee. Now, did you go to the account, accounting firm and say, all right, I need to create a new system that I intend to sell to other franchise owners, uh, or, or were you just looking for a solution for yourself at that time? 
initially was just looking for a good solution myself when I realized there wasn't that, then started going around looking specifically for someone who could help me build a good system. I mean, that's where Sam's math is really born. So you got your system built, you have yep. something that you can now share with other people. What do you do next? Grow it. And I guess actually maybe that wasn't even the first, the first big thing for me was trying to optimize it. Uh, we grew really slowly early on. Uh, we didn't try to sell the heck out of it. We really listened to our clients, the few that we had, and, and optimized the product around the Jimmy John's franchisee. Uh, the first year was really slow because of that, and that ended up being a huge advantage down the road. We were able to scale a lot better later on because the system was so well tailored to what the Jimmy John's franchisee needed. Okay, let, let's back up a little bit because I want to know how you even get started. You said let, let's optimize it, but... How do you even find the people? I mean, do you just walk up to, to a Jimmy John's, you knock on the door? Because because you have the only one in New Jersey at this time. Do you just yeah. make cold calls? Do you call a corporate and tell them about your idea? How do you even get started with that? <laughs> now, so um, again, having connected early on with a bunch of franchisees around the country, um, I was that young franchisee and all the Facebook groups going, how do I fix my ice machine? How do I <laughs> you know, optimize my schedule? I was the, the annoying guy pestering everyone with questions. Uh, and But that network grew into mm. a lot of different franchisees around the country. Many of them share the same problems. Uh, so then when I finally built the solution, Sandwich Map, it was easy to say to people, hey, if anyone else needs this, it's here for you. Never pushy with the sales, never really trying to do it, but to say, this does exactly what you need, I know because I've been doing it. Mm. It was easy at that point. Nick, if I'm working for like a small startup, it's, it's relatively easy to come up with some kind of creative idea and suggest it to, to someone on the management team and get that approved. But, but if I'm working for a larger organization where lots of things have to be approved, there's lots of red tape, it can be a lot harder to kind of get your creative ideas approved. And this holds a lot of people back. Many people talk themselves out of their creative ideas because they say, oh, CEO doesn't want to hear my, hear my idea or corporate wouldn't approve it or it's too long of a process. What would you suggest to someone like that as someone who has, you know, managed to get an idea green, green light? We um, early on knew that there wasn't anyone else doing this. Uh, so that was easy enough. We didn't worry too much about um, those problems, honestly. We, uh, we looked at those problems and said, well, we'll figure them out as we go. We focused more on the solution we wanted to provide the owners. And when those problems came up, you know, oh, we need to be able to provide corporate with semi-annual financials. You know, as, as we got to those issues, we solved them, uh, but we didn't let them stop us from building it in the first place. That's actually a very good insight because so, when you're just starting out, you don't really have a clear concept of what sorts of things you need to know now versus what answers you can afford to figure out later. And what I'm hearing from you is you, you're saying, hey, look, the most valuable thing was to have a problem that I knew how to solve and all of the paperwork, all of the details, I could figure that as I go along. But I got to convince people that I have something that's, uh, that's worth their time. Absolutely, yeah. We, we focused on clients instead of focusing on the problems that, that were probably waiting down the road. Yeah, when we got to them, we dealt with them. All right, explain to me sandwich math and, and, and how, it, how it works. How does the system work? It's nothing too intricate or crazy. It's just tailored to a specific franchise. And so... For us, that meant as an owner and having managers that I want a bonus, you know, giving financials back quickly after each period ends. So Jimmy John's works on a four week period system instead of months. That in itself was hard for many accounts to do. If they all want to do financials on a monthly basis, you get some inconsistencies there and it just doesn't line up well with what Jimmy John's corporate wants done. We knew we wanted the template to be more focused on the brand. So instead of my account used to use a restaurant's uh, general template, that doesn't really apply to a lot of things Jimmy John's does. Uh, so really was looking at the things that I knew I wanted, talking to other franchisees, finding out what they wanted, and building it directly around those things. Now, once you started Sandwich Map, it's starting to grow. Did you leave Jimmy John's behind? No, that took a little while longer. I actually just sold my franchise uh, about six months ago now, uh, but I still maintained it for a long time after that too. So that means you were, you were running a startup and a franchise at the same time. Well, I was lucky enough at that point to be about six years into running my franchise. So I had great management in place, good employees, uh, really lucky to have all that in, in line. So, so you, you built an effective system so that you didn't have to really micromanage or stress out too much. 
Yeah, which is kind of the fun thing for me too now. Now that I get to deal with Jimmy John's clients around the country, the fun thing for me is to be able to help them look at their operations. Maybe it's not even based on the bookkeeping or accounting, but to talk to franchisees, see what their problems are and, and help them solve them. For me, that's always been the big thing is I got so much good information from franchisees early on, and it's nice to finally be able to give that back and help others out too. Let's talk a little bit about that. What would you say is one of the most um, common struggles among new franchise owners? Staffing and labor for new and existing franchise owners is the, the hardest thing we deal with now. It's Jimmy John's in particular is a high labor, high staff uh, franchise. It's difficult to have enough people all the time to, to keep our brand promises. We make 30 second sandwiches. We have deliveries really fast. That requires a lot of staff and there's a lot of competing QSRs out there. So finding the good people, keeping those good people, um, knowing how to pay well enough, knowing how to set up a bonus structure. I think a lot of those things from new franchisees are really difficult. If I'm a franchise owner and I'm thinking to myself, it is tough to find good talent, to find people you can trust, to find hard workers. What, what's something that I can do to, to improve my success? Advertise in as many places as you possibly can because there's no one good solution. For some owners we find around the country, Craigslist still works, as crazy as that is. Um, a lot of our franchisees use Snag a Job. A few have tried Facebook and Instagram advertising and had good success with that, which you also end up getting good marketing kind of paired with that as well. And then honestly, having a good pay structure in place, having a good bonus structure in place for your management that's based off of financials they can see, so that ties back into sandwich math. We can give you financials seven days after your period ends, which means you can talk directly to your management and say, hey, your bonus based off of these last four weeks that just happened is this. This is why you didn't get this part of it. We can relate that right back to something that's fresh in their mind as opposed to something that might have happened three months ago. So a compensation and, and then I think the last piece of all that in maintaining a good staff would be culture, which Jimmy John's has been great at in the past. Having a culture of energy and excitement, you know, if, if you're competing with other places paying similar wages, you really need to have a place that someone wants to come into work, is excited to come into work to every day. One struggle is knowing what franchise to pick. You know you want to own a franchise, but, uh, you know, do, 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 I, do I pick something like Jimmy John's? You know, do I, do I stick with what I know? Do I go after what's interesting? Uh, what kind of tips would you offer those who know they want to be franchise owners, but they don't even know how to pick a company? Well, there's lots of resources for that. I, I think one of the ones that's missed a lot of the time, too, is just talking to local owners. Hmm. Um, most of them, if you go in and say, hey, I'm interested in maybe buying a franchise, um, this franchise, they'll talk to you and they'll be really candid. Um, I talked to a lot of Jimmy John's owners before I took the leap. Jimmy John's itself, if we're just talking about that, is you know a, a large franchise at this point with 2,800 locations. In 2016, they were number one in the franchise 500. Uh, they've had good long-term success. And I think they're making some neat changes now too that's really gonna take them into the future. But talk to owners, talk to people, that's, that's key. All right, before you went into Jimmy John's, what, what were you doing and what was the thought process that led you to that particular franchise? First off, I worked at one in college. So I was, uh, went to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Uh, it's one of the locations that corporate has all those stores owned there. So I got to work under a great general manager Shout out to John. I learned all about the brand. I did bike delivery for those guys, cruising around Ann Arbor. Uh, and I just had a lot of fun. I think I was one of those rare freshmen who was excited to get out of class so he could go work his lunch rush at Jimmy John's. So for me, I got out of that. I did some sales and marketing, and then I wanted to get into my own thing, and Jimmy John's was an easy choice. You're, you're, you're basically living out the movie montage, right? I, I mean, the, the stereotype <laughs> of the American dream. You started off yeah. as the guy delivering sandwiches on the bike. Uh, now you're running your own franchise and, and, you know, running a franchise now or running a business now that actually serves other franchise owners. That's a pretty cool thing. I feel really fortunate to have this all work out so well. But I mean, over the years, I've, I've been really kind to people. I've been as helpful as I could. I've worked really hard and it, it does feel good to have it finally come full circle and uh, come back to me. One of the things I'm interested in when talking with entrepreneurs and small business owners is stories of failure. Um, there's kind of a general perception that the people who succeed are the ones that just had all the luck or they had it easy. But when you talk to people, you know that there's a lot of stuff that just didn't come together easily for them. 
I, I like to know what was one of those things for you. I worked as a kid, you know, tirelessly since I was probably younger than I could legally work, uh, but in vineyards and orchards and doing doing fun tourist jobs in my hometown and, and saved up a whole lot of money. Uh, and then my sophomore year of college, I joined one of those painting franchises, worked my butt off, got a ton of business, did, I think, $80,000 of business that following summer and ended up just because I was a little too generous with extra stuff for clients, um, really over budgeting a lot of the jobs, um, under budgeting a lot of jobs, having way too much labor for them uh, and lost almost all my, at that point, life savings uh, with that business. Didn't let that stop me. And actually that's when I got a job with Jimmy John's following that uh, when I went back to school. Wow. All right. Let's let's move. Let's move the conversation of failure to the present day. What's sure. something what's something that's not coming together easily for you right now? Or what's what's a creative challenge that you are in the middle of figuring out? I'm in a fun place where I am working from home. Uh, I'm doing the stuff with sandwich math, et cetera, now, which I love. And I get to spend so much time talking to clients and really doing the things I enjoy about the business now. Cetera has taken away a lot of the administrative responsibilities for me, so I get to do, again, stuff that's just fun for me. So now having all this extra time and working on a few different projects with friends uh, and digging into some, some things I've been passionate about for a long time, knowing where to focus all of that energy is, is the biggest problem I have at this point. A good problem to have. No, no complaints, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so one of the, you mentioned that several projects. Uh, one of those is Stokeware. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> and this would definitely classify as a passion project. Uh, I've been slacklining, which is kind of a, like a loose tightrope, kind of a hippie sport. I'm, I'm doing air quotes here. So we built a apparel and accessory line off of uh, slacklining. So a lot of the products we try to have multi-purpose. So a bracelet you could wear. You could also, if you needed to, take it off and use it as part of your rigging in place of a carabiner, that kind of stuff. So a fun passion project, and we're slowly building into the Slackline community around the country, participating in festivals this summer. Uh, and that's, yeah, it's been fun for me. <laughs> All right, so break it down, break down the Slacklining a little bit. I'm completely unfamiliar with this hipster sport. Apparently, I've got to become more hip. What is Slacklining? Sure, sure. So you take either like a two inch or a one inch piece of webbing, kind of rope almost. You attach that between two different points, whether it's trees or, you know, two mountaintops or whatever it might be. Uh, and then try to walk across the darn thing. Uh, it's, it's got a huge learning curve. Really, everyone shakes and wobbles at the beginning. But then as you get better and better, you get to progress to doing. Uh, we do fun projects like rigging lines over water or rigging lines really high up in the air where we're wearing harnesses. But just a fun way to get outside and, and focus on balance and strength and breathing. And, and the discipline in it is, is fascinating to me. For those who are interested, you can, you can check out the website, stokeware.com, S-T-O-K-E-W-E-A-R.com. Uh, some pretty cool stuff there, <laughs> lots of information to check out. All right. Thanks. You know, one of the cool things you said is that you're in this place now where you have a lot more time to begin devoting yourself to passion projects. But you got here from running two franchises at the same time. Uh, I'm sure at one point life was tremendously busy for you. <laughs> yes. What are some tips for creating a successful system that allows you to step away from your business and still have things continue to run like a, a well-loyal machine? Like what are some things you've done to get to that point? Well, a lot of those things, I got to thank Jimmy John's for giving me. So, I mean, the two things I would say would be staffing um, and systems and procedures. And Jimmy John's, as far as systems and procedures go, is, you know, top notch. The system they've developed is fantastic. They're, that's why they're one of the fastest growing and best franchises in the country. Uh, they know what they're doing and they've put it together very, very well. Pairing that with good staff who know to follow those systems and procedures that's the best you can do to be able to step away from something or at least step back from something like a, like a brand does. All right. Now you stepped into a system that, you know, was really good already, but then you encountered a unique problem that you transformed into an opportunity and you found out that lots of other people had this problem. When people go into franchising, they go into it precisely because they don't want to reinvent their will, right? They, they, they want something that feels more like a turnkey system. Yeah. What's one of those things that you don't really realize until you start, you know, owning a franchise that 
that doesn't really come with a system. The franchise can't provide it. They're not in the business of providing it. And this is something you've got to bring on your own. What's one of those things that people often overlook? I, I think for different franchisees, it's different, which is interesting. You get people coming into the franchising world from all different backgrounds. So we talk to some people who are accountants and who manage their own stuff, and that's great. Um, that's a wonderful advantage for them. Um, some come into it from an HR background, and so they handle their own payroll, and they know how to do all that stuff. But those two things, I think, the accounting, bookkeeping, and payroll are probably the things that most people come into it not knowing how to handle. Uh, you come into it with a background maybe in customer service or sales, maybe operations, and so you're excited about running that store and being in there, but all the stuff in the background, all that data, all that you know, employee management in the background, that's the tough stuff for most people to manage, which is why Sanders Math has done so well, which is why there's so many payroll companies who cater to franchises. That's definitely the hardest thing, I think, for most franchisees. And the least fun thing, too. They want someone else to manage that because it's not too much fun in putting data, doing all that stuff. Nick, my last question. I'm, as a sports fan, I'm very interested in the mental side of the game, the psychological side. Uh, do you have any practices, rituals, routines, whatever it may be, uh, that helps you maintain uh, an optimistic attitude or that helps you process a lot of the stress that comes along with the entrepreneurial lifestyle? Um, I think to be really general, uh, right back at you would be just to have some sort of um, athletic thing that you're doing, some sort of exercise. Uh, it's easy to get into a franchise and you're working 60, 80, 100 hour weeks uh, just to lose that routine. So maybe you were a runner running five days a week and you get in the franchise and that's gone. You got to maintain that no matter what. Because even though that seems like it might be more stress to have that 30 minutes a day doing that, it is, it is such a mental help to have that there. Nick, for anyone that's interested in keeping up with you and your work and following along with the latest developments of your passion projects and so forth, uh, where can they find you? Uh, LinkedIn is probably the best uh, place at this point. Uh, Nick Olson, O-L-S-O-N. And then ceteris.com forward slash sandwich math for anyone interested in the bookkeeping side of things. Excellent. Nick, thanks for joining with, joining me and sharing your insights and stories. Yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. For added insights and a full collection of episodes from Small Business Edge, visit ceteris.com slash podcast.